I welcome to, uh, after seven battle match, the first time I do official talking. Uh, some because my birthday was yesterday and I was born a little bit about personal 72 years ago in Germany. And <laughs> yeah. I uh, so give you a context, you know, why I'm talking like this and what I'm talking about. I, um, so after to have a first time contact in 1976 with technology in the USA, to learn about the microcomputers and these and these and these and these. At the end, I transferred some technology and made a company in Germany. So we hacking bits and making microcomputers and this and this and this and this. Uh, yeah, until 86. I was very sick then because it was too much stress, it was a nice life and whatever. And I stopped, then I went off. So I retired myself uh, with the idea to go around, to go around and go around and find a new kind of life. And uh, eventually I went up in Greece where eventually there was a German woman there waiting for me or not. But we met, so we hooked up, so uh, uh, 30 years, that was more than 30 years ago. We are married and living happily thereafter. I so being in Greece, I was bored. So what do you do there, you know? <laughs> no potatoes or kapuzi or whatever. So I said, okay, I start sailing, which at the end brought me to a sailing boat crossing the Atlantic and go to the Caribbean Sea to see if there is something greener on the other side. So, okay. After three years I was bored again, I went came back to Greece. So I was 2002, I was in Greece, in three. And 2004 I was bored again. So I remember I could do some electronics or something like this. I did professionally. And I was looking for some ideas and I read about Wi-Fi. Oh, Wi-Fi, 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 this is interesting. So 2005, I went to Germany and bought some Foneras, which came out, and these, you know, the first hardware, and start to play in 2006. We set up in uh, the area where I'm living, and I will show you where this is, uh, the first Wi-Fi stations for sailors. So I was a sailor, everybody's coming here, wants to have internet, so we had some internet there. Uh, so, we see where we are and where this all is. Uh, this is Greece, maybe you can make it out, okay? And uh, then I learned somebody in university which did something astonishingly like mesh network. I had no idea what is a mesh network, but apparently they had robotics and they needed the sort of robotics to communicate with, an, with each other. And uh, they said, we can share you the code. And I started, you know, uh, meshing, meshing, meshing. My wife said, OK, I want to have a bachelor too, so be an engineer. And I said, you make mesh networks. She said, no, no, I don't like. You make ne mesh networks. So I do the technique, and you make, you write the 100 pages. OK, we did this. And then the university said after 2008, we are finished. So take the code and be yourself. I said, no, no, I, <laughs> I cannot do it. And then, then I did read about Batman and things like this, a roof net. And I said, ah, maybe interesting. And I always was a type to find some technology where other people don't go. <laughs> No, and there was the time Batman and Batman at once, they split, you know. So I said, hmm, layer two. Layer two would be something new. Okay, so I went layer two. Uh, and then we started making boxes and killing uh, cheap uh, foneras and put it in there and put it out there. And so more technical technical solution, because there was nothing you could buy. And then we made, started flashing, and you know, OpenWRT, what was called that 7 and 8, you know. So it went there, this way, and way, and way, and way. And all of a sudden, we've been uh, three stations in this area. 
where it was on a small port, on a small island, this one here. No? And I've been 10 years over there and uh, providing, learning, providing internet with three meshed, somehow meshed stations. And uh, so then I said, ah, development goes very fast and this and this. And uh, uh, so we find some cheap routers and, you know, we, we get four until we end it with OpenWRT 12. I do not know. It's, uh, what was the name? AA. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. So, uh, and that went more professional then, you know. So I said, okay. I um, uh, then after ten years we moved here. We've been on that island. I was on my boat, living on my boat, making everything from the boat by twelve volt and things and things like this, soldering and computerizing and then, and then we went to a small house, and uh, in the event of this, we f said we need a house. Okay, so bye bye sailing. You get stationary. And in this area, you see, uh, you got you got it. I maybe I was too fast. Where this area is, I go back. This is Greece. All this is Greece. This is uh, the Peloponnese, and we are here. You know, <laughs> so uh, we are some about uh, uh, 250 clicks from Athens away, which for us it's in nowhere. The next city is 25 kilometers, 15, 18,000 people. That's it. You know? A lot of summer houses, 80, 90 percent. Winter, there is nobody. In summer, there are 2,000 people. So uh, uh, there we are living. I try to give you an impression for the houses because I would like to invite you and come. You know, some people came already. And uh, if you want to work a little bit on the internet, so we have always some work to do, and to do swimming, bathing, or whatever, so if we can arrange your... We are very happy. We have a big house, which is solely for somebody who comes, three rooms, kitchen, everything, two big dogs, two small cats, and my wife. So this is what you have to cope, to cope with if you come. Uh, uh, this is... By the way, the, mo the, the main talking point, you know, to get somebody coming down here. Um, so, uh, what we did then, uh, we uh, started to compile OpenWRT because there was nothing really ready to use. And we started to have an idea uh, on the next layer, organization and maintenance. So in this time, 2006, there was nothing really you could get. There was one package called Robin. I do not remember there was in the state somebody who had a Robin package. I did analyze what they are doing. And then we had an idea. So the scope of all this is to have it simple, no cost, because if you transport it somewhere, you know, you have less knowledge. Maybe you don't have a dollar. There are people like that, I know from Malaysia, they don't have the dollar. So uh, there was, okay, what you do uh, with this? And the idea was, okay, keep it single. You have a client for the uh, a dashboard, you have a client written in Bash. Somehow it works. If somebody knows Bash, he comes around and gets the shit, you know, better. <laughs> it works since a, f a, f a few years. PHP on the other side, on an ordinary web server, you can rent or just get for nothing. And this gives you a dashboard. Uh, the topology is a bit like this. There is not all, all stations here. There is, we live here. We live here. There is a hill. And there is the next village. There is the next village. And there is the island. And uh, there is, on 200 meter highs, the central point which distributes some main node, I, uh, uh, these ones here to our house, so I can have control. We have all in all uh, three uplinks. Uh, we have one uplink here, it's on about 12 megabit. We have a new uplink here, 22. And we have here the best uplink with 1.5 megabit. 
So I, uh, this is mainly for my wife's work to make a slow VPN to Germany to work there. And uh, this is the topology. There is in the Lear, we had one here. And uh, I like stories, so I give you a true story why we don't have a station here. One night I was called from a friend from the island. He said the police came with a small rubber dinghy. And they jumped around the island and looking for an IP with a specific IP address. And they did not find it. After three hours they were tired. It was four o'clock early in the morning, they went home. When the report, you know, to the court, is that we could not find it. What happened? There was here, we had a mesh network here, an AP. There was a woman over there which had a conversation in Facebook. She's about to kill herself. The guy, he called Facebook. Facebook called with a special line they have, you know, the authorities in Athens, you know, and there was now the uh, you know, NSA, Greek NSA involved, and they did find out where it comes from. No, not the IP. And the IP was the uplink from here. So they sent two police guys four o'clock in the morning with a rubber dinghy you know, to go over there. They've been very happy. <laughs> so they jumped around the island and they found the IP here. And they start shouting and shouting, finding the woman, you know, and uh, not to kill herself. But the woman was there. So after a while, I heard the story. I said, do you do something? You say technically to help them. What happened? No, no. I said, they said, friends, they said, don't do this. You get trouble. So I had some trouble later on. We, I had to tell you the story. And I met the police guy. And he said, ah, you are the German guy who is doing these things. I said, what things? <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, you have uh, things, internet things. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and he told me the story, like four o'clock in the morning here, get over there, because the prosecutor said them to go. We go, we go, we go, we could not find. And later we found out, somebody tells me, this woman is called ABC and was in Ilya. So, seven o'clock in the morning, we took the car and went up Ilya. So, presumably, find out that. No, she was very nice because she did drink a lot and she was, you know, with a headache. Nothing happened. But was a report to the prosecutor. Yes. What did she drink? Oh, uh, uh, Uzo. Uzo, okay. Or uh, Ciparo, what you say, uh, uh, better quality. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, watch out, they are watching you. I said, who? Yeah, NSA and whatever they called, you know. And I said, okay, what can I do? He's, I think it's not illegal. That was five years ago. And, uh, okay, so uh, um, we proceeded, proceeded technically on the one side. And uh, on the other side, we try to maintain and get remote access and get the dashboard, which i show you later on. Uh, this means that was the other way of the story, to have the technically running. And this, what I told you now, is more the uh, social part of it, you know, what happens. So with all this, it did happen. Some people, they made by definition, this is all illegal. Because you can telephone without cost, with Skype, which must be illegal, you know. They pay for the telephone, so there are people which telephone and they don't pay, that must be illegal. So they made some things, some machines, and uh, they, now we don't have uh, uh, television, you know, it does, the television does not work. Parenthesis, the television switched from analog to digital, so it did not work anymore. It was not our fault, <laughs> because they switched the way to transmission. But anyway, they have three people been saying from this island here, the fucking German guy, he's doing everything illegal. If we do it illegal, we are Greeks, you know. But to come a foreigner doing illegal things here, it's not possible. At the end, you know, it takes a while, it takes a while, it makes rounds and rounds and rounds until it comes to the prosecutor. 
And some friend who was drinking with the prosecutor and said, the fucking guy, you know, we got to do something. He said, okay, I'll write the police to go in there to make a statement. What are you doing? So he came to my house and I said, you come to the police to make a statement, what are you doing? He said, you, like me, maybe go four years to the university until you undergraduate, and then I can explain what we are doing. <laughs> So he was not happy like this, and I said, I cannot explain what we are doing. We transport internet from here to here. So why? He said, because the people need internet. No, no, this is not the question. He said, why? I said, because the people need internet. Why? I said, what do you want to hear? How much do you earn? I said, no, nothing. No, 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 tell me. How much you get? No, I said, nothing. It's impossible. Nobody in Greece does anything without earning something. <laughs> and I said, why is this so important? He said, you must know, if you do a job and earn money, we say it's illegal because maybe we do the job and earn the money. I said, you cannot do the job. That, it's not the point. It's not the point. If you do the job, you know, the job is occupied. No. And if someday we wake up and we could do it, no, then we cannot do it because you are here. You know, I said, that's a kind of logic. After 30 years in Greece, I learned. I said, sorry, stays like this. Okay, he wrote a report to the prosecutor. And uh, then I got a telephone call in the morning. Two engineers from the... Uh, uh, um, in information ministry or whatever, sent down here for measurement if the radiation is okay. If people are dying there or the cows are dying or whatever, and the television is blocked and, and whatever like this. And they ran around and measuring, and because we have normal routers on, on this one, they went off and they said, okay, you can't find anything. That's bad. The three people said on the island, that's bad. You really, you can't find anything? No, no, it said it has CE number and everything, you know, so we can't find. They went off. So a friend of mine, uh, I do speak Greek, I do understand it. I, uh, he telephoned me up. He said, you should know they don't give up. They sit there. They sit there and they want to do something. And they said, the fucking guy, the German must go with his internet. Our television is not working. I have a headache every morning, you know, and, uh, and so my friend said, you drink too much. No, no, I drink all the years, you know, so that cannot be. That must be like this. So I will show you what at the end it was. Oh, where I do now the pictures? Uh, yeah. Here? Here? Yeah, okay, this is uh, another piece, you know. This was the village which I talk about, where the women supposedly kill herself, and she just drank too much. We cut, we cut this off, uh, to just to prevent to go to prison, you know. Uh, so, where I get another picture? The next one? Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Okay, this is one of these uh, first routers. This is uh, uh, DAR 300. We had very cheap. I think this is another, this is another, this is another. No. <coughs> there are missing the. Um, hold on. I'm missing another photograph. Now we come to a, a quite a nice and nice uh, uh, tower, Trace, Trace Tower. Uh, yeah. For the status for today. What's went all of this and why I. So, okay. This is the culprit. This is the point of fight. This is the target. What we did, we take a water line, 100 millimeter, dig the hole, get an old oil, uh, oil barrel over there, some cement, dig that up. We got an old 80 watt cell, solar cells, a car battery, and there is an ubiquity, 5 gigahertz, and there is another ubiquity over there. And they said, this must go. And they found out the idea, oh, that's a construction. The guy, does he have allowance for a building, a construction? We call, you know, they... Uh, okay, they called them, they went there. No, they called them. 
the, the guy here, he lives here and made this construction, and we deem this is illegal. So they came to my, no, they wrote. They said, dear Mr. Reinhardt, you know, you're supposed to have an illegal antenna construction in the area, blah, blah, blah. Please meet us tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, uh, on the other side, and show us where it is. So I said, they don't know where it is. <laughs> so uh, I did read a second time, I understood, so I have a very nice lawyer. I telephoned her up in the, in the evening time. I said, I have something which they call me up for a rendezvous tomorrow to show them my illegal construction. <laughs> she said, uh, you send it to me. Okay, I send it, she read it. She said, yes. They say, you supposedly did an illegal, illegal construction and ask you to show them where it is. I said, how can they know it's illegal if they don't know where it is? Well, it's by definition. Someone made an accusation to the police. Okay, do I go, do I not go, do I go? Okay, she said, we go. I went the next day, <laughs> no, and I met two guys. And they looked at me, and they said, there is an illegal construction, we wrote like this, and uh, we like to know where it is. And I said, I have no idea what you are talking about. <laughs> Maybe there is something over there, you take the binacles and you walk two and a half kilometers over there and maybe you can find it. It's raining. I stay here and drink a coffee. <laughs> okay, I was standing there and had four, calling some friends. And we waited for the, the guy who comes back. They eventually went to the island, no, which I showed you. Went to the island with a boat. Coming back after two hours. I don't like a face like this. No. <laughs> you have to pay a fine. I said, why? Yeah, we found your illegal construction. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, you found something. What was it? <laughs> he said, it was an illegal construction. <laughs> he said, what was it? It was an illegal construction, I tell you. <laughs> I said, what about the fine? So a friend of mine, he knew the guys. He said, well, if it's not a de definition, what it is, no, you cannot say it was illegal. I can say it was illegal. Whatever it is, it's illegal. <laughs> okay, give up. Goodbye. Auf Wiedersehen. Next day in the morning, I get a telephone call. And there was a guy saying his name and what. And I remember he signed. It was one of the engineers. And they said, we have to talk privately. Privately? Yeah, you go to a coffee and this and this. I said, I have no car. You come to my house. And then we talk privately. <laughs> so the two guys came and they say, hello, good morning. Can we step out a little bit? And then I said, OK. You have a problem. I said, no, I don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we send you this illegal. I said, I don't have a problem with it, because you say it's illegal. I don't know. My lawyer says, she does not know. You say it's illegal. If I say it's illegal, it's illegal. There is a problem, big problem. If you want to go, the problem go away, it's 1,000 euros. <laughs> if not, it will be 5,000 euros. Then I said, OK, if I pay 1,000 euro, this is every Christmas or for all the time. <laughs> and what will happen? Nothing will happen. He said, I pay you, I understand, I pay you 1,000 euros, so nothing will happen. Yes. I said, that is very expensive for nothing. <laughs> I said, the problem will go away. Where does it go? Well, it goes to a specific place in my office. I said, maybe to Christmas? <laughs> and it will appear again? <laughs> I said, OK. So we arranged and this. I called my lawyer and said, what I do, what I do, blah, blah, blah. And she said, 
kill it. I said, no. Because this is, you have seen the chart before, the center of the distribution. And so I will lose my internet and my house and all the people. I said, no. She said, mm, mm, why not? He said, because I'm fucking German. So <laughs> if it's illegal, they prove it's illegal. So you go to court. I said, I've been to court three times. You know, so in five years, they will be caught or whatever. She said, there is six months prison. I said, OK. If I pay 1,000 euros and still go to prison, it's expensive, the prison. <laughs> she said, OK, I know you for 10 years and, and this. So she said, ah, this is Polo do Mio. This is the, uh, the uh, what do you say, state organization for allowances for buildings, any kind of construction. And these two engineers have been the, the, the chefs of this organization. This from my part. But my lawyer is from Patra, from the next biggest city. And she works for the same office, but in Patra. And she said, I will ask my chef, you know, for a help. And so they start sitting together, I think explaining. And they made now a booklet, eight, eight pages, why it cannot be illegal. So it was 22 paragraphs. They cited, you know. And at the end, they said, it's a, a project an international project where people coming from India, from uh, Australia, and from fucking elsewhere, and they put up this antenna. If you say it's illegal, you go uh, to Argentina, you know, and find Geo over there or whatever, you know. It's not my fault, they put it over there. So now, now the first end of the story. The next day we went over there to give the leaflet, the booklet, <laughs> to that guy who wants the thousand euros. And we met him. He said, so what's happening? He still was waiting for his payment. Eh? So my lawyer said, I have this statement. So then he said, what statement? He said, if you are able, please read it. <laughs> he started the first page. Five paragraph, he said, OK. I said, give a stamp. He said, it will go to court. And she said to him, my chef in Patra, you know, <laughs> for like your institution, we spent all night for this paper to go to court just to find out if the judge will read it or not. <laughs> no? And so it's your problem now, not our problem now. So, what's going like this? You know? I hate the fucking Germans. You know, I hate it, you know. And this is the situation at the minute. We're still operating it, you know. We have some about uh, 40 families having internet from this. And uh, to give you just an impression what we did on the technical part. That was like your grandfather told you some stories sometimes from his former life. This was, you know, for, from the life which we happen to be. So I wait eventually for six months prison or eventually uh, what it will cost not to go to prison. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's more a technical prisoner, you see. Uh, OK, so now I want a, uh, the browser. Oh, OK. Um, so it, in the years, what we did, and you remember in those years, you did not have a complete system. Complete system means we had all kind of protocols and things like these, which give the transport and the connections. But on top of it, maintenance or something <laughs> like this, dashboards, have not been existing, to my knowledge. So we sit down and played and said, what could we do? I hated to program in Bash since Unix or something like this, or uh, uh, CS or whatever it was called. And so I sit down and, uh, and so where it is? Oh, 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 oh I need your help again. <laughs> uh, so the next, go out of this. Uh, uh, we need this. No, no. Uh, 
No, 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 no. Ah, this one. Okay. Okay, uh, what we did is we made a, um, like a demon, a bash demon, running and gathering some data in every node. Get the data with a w, uh, a wget to a, um, um, a web server uh, with no money, which is PHP. Had a PHP script over there and that get the data and formed it nicely, you know, and uh, we had the dashboard. So the dashboard is organized on Mac numbers of these, of the machines. So the first time a machine goes alive, it knows it has the default, the default network. So we find it in the default network, no? where itself, it announces itself uh, to be there and alive. This is, if I give you one of these routers, you plug it in, and after 10 minutes, it shows up here. No? So I just, before I came, I installed a router which itself announces it to the default network, which is just logical. It's not really a, an extra network. It's just the logical part of the organization of this. And uh, it starts to get some information out where we can assume all this data to see what he's doing. You know? This one is also with a zero T address. So we see uh, the memory free, the load, you know, uh, the, where it's connected, the gateway, Mac, and all these things, what usually you should know if it's okay, if it has internet and this. And then we go with the script insight, and we say, okay, this new machine goes to our home network, like Sargula, which uh, is in the area where we live, this uh, village is called Sargula, and uh, then it will. Well, okay, then it will show up here. This is for the end. Uh, in this dashboard, which is really a simple thing, you see there are red ones. Red one says last seen, ninety four days. Well, that been killed from somebody, and ninety four days it never showed up. The show up time is 10 minutes. So you see here it says 10 minutes. Should be sending new packet of data. The colored here is an uplink. And it says the IP number of the uplink. It is a DHCP server. What it gives out, you know, it's all these kind of data. And if you open it, it says the leases uh, which he gave out every 10 minutes. So I have an overview, you know, who is on this now logical LAN, LAN segment for here, the wireless segment. And this goes on. These in the effect should be known as quite very simple, transportable. So if somebody can manage 300 codes PHP, and 400 lines of code bash, he can take it and can ring it and change it or whatever. So that was the target. And I had two experiments. There was one uh, guy in uh, Scotland, you know, he had three, he wants to have three nodes. And he had no idea what to do, but he learned bash and PHP. So he said, I don't like the color, I don't like this one and this one, this one. And he played with it, you know. And this is this general idea. It's, it's never like sophisticated what Linux has and things like this. Should be simple, simple, very simple, you know. So, okay, uh, this is. The last thing I want to say, it's all the time. Uh, I had that idea from 1978. We had uh, industrial installations of microcomputer automata, what do you say, machines. And uh, because it was far away, we always, the first thing we did was a remote access. And I was struggling to find a quite remote access for the, uh, one of these, presumably the uplink. And now we uh, started the, the Genovos uh, by us. 
We started a uh, zero tier, which is a packet. You can look it up. It's either like a, a worldwide somehow uh, uh, layer two network where you have drivers for uh, Linux, you have drivers for OpenWRT, you have drivers for Android and whatever, and gives you, you know, the access like uh, v uh, VPN to your machines if you open it up. And this is what we are starting using. It's a little bit power and uh, memory hungry, but it works. So we switch it only on for specific reasons, not all the time. And this is technically so uh, uh, what I can report. So it's not so interesting. The story before was more interesting. No. So at the end, I will show you the place, the place on Google Streets. You know where it is. So let us go to Google Streets and say, this is, you go out of my house to the road and you find this picture. So you just can dive in, <laughs> in the water. Water is very clear, we don't have any in industry. It's not sand, it's not, you know, uh, it's pebble beach like, like this. And um, uh, if you turn around, so I try to, okay, this is the street that goes, you know, I... Uh, on and on and on, and we turn around, and we turn around, and we turn around. So where where we are? Where we are? Oh, oh, <laughs> got, got to find, uh, got to find, I got to find, interestingly, where are we? Where are we? I'm lost a bit. Ah, yeah, okay, I know. Okay, we go the road, we go, the, this is a small village, some about uh, 200 houses, Occupied in the winter time, ten months a year, except July and August, by five houses or six, uh, which means the internet, what we uh, give the residents which are living there, gets overwhelmed. So okay, this is the entrance of the house we are living in. So it's a garden. It's a garden over there. There are two houses. Uh, yeah, uh, exceptionally st uh, styled by Bauhaus style from Vienna 920, because the architect who built it was a Greek, but he studied in Vienna. And uh, so we have Bauhaus style, whatever. Uh, and from there, oh, there's one neighbor coming in. <laughs> um, so we had, she was, she was visiting us and some people was coming around and uh, have a say good day or stayed a while. And so uh, this, if you want this, this area, you see the mountains in the background, so somebody wants to hiking, we have a very small uh, creek there, you can go hiking, 2,000 meters high, you can jump from there into the sea, you know, and it's a lonely area, so except July, August, there is only us and few people, we give the internet, you know. And uh, yeah, that's it. So if you want, you can write to i for free, i for free, i uh, gr at gmail dot com. So it's an i and a four number, free, you know, i gr like Greece at gmail dot com. Or you can ask me. We uh, would like to have anybody coming down here. We have the facilities. If you don't, are not afraid of dogs, I can show you some dogs, the dogs before. <laughs> These are quite big ones, but very friendly. And we would like uh, to make a community like this. And I come, the last point is why I wrote it's a non-community. Ten years we tried to get people involved. I held five seminars in universities. It took six or seven years to get to that point. These have been attended by more than 300 people and not one showed up later on for a contact. Not one of them. And that, then we just stopped it. I said, there is nobody interested to work for now. This is really why community work and efforts is something which is not known in Greece. It's not in the blood. You can, you work for yourself or the family, and that's it. 
is a historical lesson, but it is a lesson, and uh, we just stopped it. There are exceptions. We had one or two, and we are welcoming any kind of exception who said, I'm interested, you know, I can come and play and whatever, you know. But in general, the efforts, what we did was very hefty. We had translation, we had exhibitions, we had do anything at all. I uh, compiled OpenWRT, set up a server and, and uh, held seminars how to do it, and uh, structural seminars and all this. And at the end, it was gone. No. OK, thank you very much for grandfather's talks. <laughs> no. And uh, I hope it was not too boring. Okay, cut. <laughs>